Good morning. Welcome to Random Thoughts today. And as I'm pondering the things that I need to get done today, there is one key challenge. What's my priority? What am I supposed to do first? Well, that's the great question about all of it is, what are our priorities? To What do we make high and important or what do we set back, put down, yeah, do that later? No, I'm not going to get into that stuff as far as what do I choose as my highest priority. What I am going to get into is what is my highest priority? What is the most important thing in my life and can be and could be and will be in yours? Stick around for the rest of our video today in this episode of Random Thoughts. We'll be right back. Yet my weakness is made perfect In your unfailing love The things I do may not mean much It seems so insufficient I don't Okay, priorities. What is a priority? Well, things or someone that I place at the highest level, you know, the one thing that I want to do more than everything else, the one person that I elevate to the highest degree in my life, this is our priority. And then everything else is step down uh, from there. Um, Stephen Covey, uh, the Four Quadrants, for those of you who may know who he is and, and what he's about, he's kind of a, a management uh, guru kind of thing. He had four quadrants uh, of uh, consideration. What do we consider to be, uh, so that we focus on getting that done? Uh, what is uh, of high priority and urgent? And I may not be getting the verbiage correct, oh, for those of you who really know it, know it. But what's, what is urgent and what is necessary, that's quadrant number one. What is urgent but not necessary, that's quadrant number two. Quadrant number three, uh, yeah, it's uh, not really urgent, but it's necessary. And quadrant number four, not urgent, not necessary. The whole concept is you can if you can assign things that you do into one of those four areas, you'll get the urgent and necessary done first. And the, the things that are not urgent and not necessary, you'll end up doing last. It's a great way of assessing what to do. However, you can't put people into that category. He <laughs> can't say people are unnecessary. People are not urgent. People are necessary. People are urgent. And in today's society of we don't value people that well unless you're in my immediate circle of influence. Yes. Or when things do pop up, like bad scenarios like Uvalde and a few of the other issues uh, and shootings that have popped up. All of a sudden, yes, whoa, 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 everything's important. But what I find in observing is the simply simple fact that the highest urgency and the highest importance in any person's life is me, myself, and I. I am the most important. What I want is of most urgency. And if it just so happens to coordinate with somebody else, well, you know, that's a bonus. What do I want? What do I need? What can I care about? You know, this is not of God. And that's why this is kind of our random thought for the morning. What is of highest priority? Jesus tells us what is of highest priority. And he doesn't talk about it in the context of the four quadrants that Covey talks about. He talks about it in two simple ways. 
love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is like the first. Love your neighbor as yourself. So the key element here is going beyond me, myself, and I. Seeing something and someone of a higher priority and a higher importance than me. Well, number one, who is that? Well, duh. From my point of view, it's obvious. And sometimes it's not. But God is of our highest priority. God is the one who created us. God is the one who saves us. God is the one who guides us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is the one who has created everything for us to exist with. Everything that we need in order to exist is right here on, in our realm, in our environment. Everything that we need is right here. Our salvation is right here. For God sent Jesus into the world in order to give himself up as a sacrifice for many, to, to which we, we think, well, I don't need to be saved. Oh, yes, you do. We all need to be saved. We all need the salvation of God, or else we're all going to be stuck in that same place where that rotten, good-for-nothing, slippery, slimy snake is. Yeah. We need salvation. We need salvation from ourselves so that we can see and comprehend and take on God. And in that way, we see our lives in a radically different direction. We see our relationship, our need for God, how God is urgent and necessary, how our life with people the world around us, our vision for the world around us changes. It no longer becomes selfish. And trying not to stand on a soapbox too, bit, too much. <laughs> but we've got enough selfish in the world. We've got enough blame in the world. We've got enough horror in the world. We don't need any of that. What we need, what this world needs, what you need, is that prioritization of God is first and foremost. That's what you need. That's what I need. Everything else fails in comparison. So when we do act on a selfish nature, when we do focus on me, myself, and I, I can say to God, God, write me. Make me go back towards direction of following you and following your ten ways. Help me to see you as numero uno. Help me to see you in a manner that is loving and compassionate. Now, I, you've heard me talk about this word love previously, so I'm not going to dive into it too much today. But I will say this, that love, your, love the Lord your God with everything you've got, all my heart, my soul, my mind, my strength, Love God first, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Think of someone more highly than you ought. Somebody else outside of you, outside of your own sight. Like, for example, outside of me. Look, outside of me. No, that didn't work. Outside of me, outside of me my own world, outside of my own perspective, outside of my own wants, my own desires, my own thoughts, my own my, my, my. Blow that brain away. Literally, blow it away. Because that's what Jesus did. He took all that want, all that sin, and he took it away from you. He forgave you of all of it. Means it's gone. See ya. Sayonara. It's out of here. Oh, hi there. What is left is a new person. The old person is gone. The new person has arrived. This person of desiring to live his life for God, with God, by God. And it's more important for me to live in the realm of 
What can I do for my neighbor? What can I do to help? How can I be of service to you? Because you know what's going to happen, don't you? You will be of service towards someone else. And you will concentrate your energy on someone else. And that someone else, whoever that someone else may be, will realize what you have done. And say, wait a minute, why are you doing this for me? What's the point of view? What's, the, what, what's your angle? That's usually what some people will say. What's your angle? What's your, what's your perspective? What do you want out of it? And we'll say, I don't want anything. I just, want to, I just want to love on you. I just want to give of myself for you, to you, by, by God. And this is what God wants for you. So priorities. We make God the priority and everything else seems to fall into place. Now, lastly, we'll get, wrap this up real quick. What about me? Well, if you're starting to think, what about me? Then you're back to the me, myself, and I again. But yeah, you know what happened. You know what's going to happen. There will be a level of satisfaction on a personal level when you give of yourself to God first and to people second. What you want more than anything in the world may actually just happen by not you not focusing on it. What do I mean by that? Well, simply put, if I'm focusing on, let's say, I want to be the world's best football player. But if I want to help somebody else be the world's best football player, let, let's say you've got somebody who you're working with and uh, you're an offensive tackle, they're an offensive tackle, and he's struggling. He, you know what the technique is. You help him. You, move, you, you work with him. Well, doesn't that mean he's going to take your spot? No, it's not about defending my spot. It's about elevating the other. And by means of elevating the other, I'm making myself better. See, it's third. third. I'm, la I'm third in this equation. God's first, people second, I'm third. But I also get this layer of elevation when I'm helping somebody else. If you have any questions on that, please comment below. Let me know what you think about that. I know what's up in here, and I'm hoping it's translating coming out of here so that you would know more about where I'm coming from. But let me know if you catch it. Let me know if you catch it. All right. We've got a lot of work to do today. This is a great day. This is a Thursday. A uh, great day to bring to you another random thought this day on priorities. We'll look forward to seeing you Sunday morning. You guys have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Jesus is nothing but love. Nothing but love. Jesus is Love gave him a lowly birth.